So you're a member of a Bible study that's studying the Gospels, and you happen to be covering the passage where Jesus says that Jonah was in the belly of a great fish for three days and three nights. Suddenly, your Bible study leader says, you do realize that Jesus didn't really believe that events like this one actually occurred as recorded in the Old Testament. He was simply accommodating the superstitious beliefs of his day. Well, what are you going to do when that happens? Well, stick around and we'll discuss it. Be right back. Hey, thanks for sticking around. This is askabibleprof.com, where we give straightforward answers to your questions about the Bible and Christianity. And today we're talking about the attitudes of Jesus and the apostles with respect to the veracity of the Old Testament. Our guest is Dr. John N. Oswald. Dr. Oswald is a well-recognized Old Testament scholar that has taught at leading seminaries around the United States. He has also written several books, one of which is a preeminent commentary on the book of Isaiah, and descriptions for these books can be found below. He has also served as a president at a Christian college and an evangelical seminary. And so, without further delay, Dr. Oswald. I would say to them that the Bible is a whole, W-H-O-L-E. I would say to the modern Christian that the Bible is a whole, and you cannot separate the New Testament from the Old Testament because the New Testament assumes the Old Testament. The Old Testament lays the necessary foundation who is it who loves us to the cross? It is the God who snapped his fingers and the Big Dipper jumped off the end. The Old Testament portrays for us God's majesty and his glory, his transcendence, his wonder. If we cut that out from under the New Testament, it's very easy for us to create a little sentimental grandpa God who says, oh, that's all right, honey. I don't care if you did that or not. The Old Testament is the essential foundation to the New Testament. And we don't need to answer every question we have about the Old Testament, but we need to understand that it is indeed the inspired word of God. And who is Jesus? He is the son of the father. Who is the Father? He is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. They go together and they cannot be separated. So in the Old Testament, we find why it is that sin must be published, punished. He is just. Cut that away and the New Testament says, well, it's not clear why Jesus had to die other than maybe to be an example of God really being loving to us. So I would say to the modern Christian, uh, the Old Testament, as difficult as it can be to understand, is nevertheless worth your time and attention to understand it because it's the essential foundation to your New Testament faith. When Jesus and the apostles base their further revelation upon the original revelation and in the process clearly believe in the historicity of what took place in the Old Testament, they're saying what I've been saying throughout this discussion. That is, the theology emerges from what God did in time and space and if God didn't do that, then the theology is, if not highly questionable, worthless. So they're saying, they're using the same argumentation. We know who God is because of what he has done with historical persons in historical events. And we're doing the very same thing. Paul, if Christ be not raised, then we are of all men to be pitied because we've believed a lie. 
He would never buy the idea. Well, someone intuited that life does not end at the grave. And so they created this lovely story of Jesus rising from the dead as the basis, as the vehicle for their lovely intuition. Paul would have laughed them out of court. He says, no, no. Our faith, our theology grows out of what happened in time and space. And if it didn't happen, forget it. That's not a new idea with Paul. He is drawing that right from the beginning of the Old Testament all the way through. It's the same argument. I think Jesus would say to the modern Christian who wants to embrace Jesus but doubt the Old Testament, you can't have it both ways. I, a historical person, am the evidence, the final evidence of God's grace and love. But I am the end of a process that is single all the way through. Jesus didn't begin incarnation. God was incarnating himself in human history from the very beginning. And Jesus would say, you cannot separate faith in me and my historical veracity from faith in those earlier days and their historical veracity. I think it's very clear that Jesus did not see the Old Testament as containing simply legends which we could deal with as we wished. Throughout Jesus' teaching, you see him treating the Old Testament as a reliable historical source. It is not a container of uh, legends that may con some sort of truth. It is exactly what it claims to be. It is a reliable record of God's interaction with human beings in time and space, revealing himself to the world. And there's no evidence that Jesus in any way thought of the Bible as composed, or of the Old Testament as composed of myths. And there you have it. Jesus believed in the veracity and the historicity of the events recorded in the Old Testament. Given this reality, then there's no reason why his modern followers should not have the same confidence in the Old Testament. This is askabibleprof.com. I'm Dr. Monty Shanks. If you appreciated the video, then consider hitting like and subscribing. Hey, thanks for watching, and God bless.